Hello and welcome back to the vlog. My name's Ed Hope. I'm a junior doctor in the UK. The date is Monday the 23rd of March. It's about 20 to 4. You might think, oh, why the hell am I not getting ready for work? That's because I'm on a night shift. I'm starting work at 8 p.m. tonight. Night shifts are generally quieter. We get fewer patients, but then we have fewer doctors as well. So you end up pretty much working at the same intensity. That means that you have less senior support. It's run by the second in command, so the registrar, so there generally isn't a consultant or an attending overnight. And so you tend to work a little bit more independently. And I've got a feeling things were starting to pick up at the hospital. I caught up with Sonia, one of the consultant anaesthetists, when she came back from her 24 hour on call in the uh, intensive care unit. This is what she had to say yesterday. What's been happening? Oh man, so home after, well, 15 hours. It's, um, yeah, it's it's kicking off. You know, because apparently every five to six days they're saying things are double. A double but you think in, now yeah. we're seeing more. I think it's, it's even maybe a little bit faster than that. So we know that the London ICUs are now not full, but starting to get that way. That's not the case with us, but we've seen a real uptick in activity in the last 24 hours. And it's interesting, actually, it's patients in their 50s and 60s, mostly, that are coming in. It's not really, really old folk. And most of them, luckily, don't need my help on ICU. They're settling with some oxygen, um, as we thought they probably would. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there are one or two who are coming in very, very unwell and needing to go onto ICU and onto life support with ventilators. And are you being asked to review a lot of patients in ED as well? Then? Yeah, I think that's that's been a, a significant difference today compared to the rest of the week, that um, now it gets it feels like there's a lot of people coming through the front door okay. and I think because this is a new illness doctors are nervous about it like everyone else and I think want someone senior to review people quite early but I'm pleased to say most of the people that I've seen in the in the A&E department today have been sat there having a cup of tea on their mobile phones with a bit of a low oxygen level and yeah. uh, those guys are fine they just need a, a bit of supplemental oxygen for a while. And you think these are very likely COVID cases yes. then? Yes, right, okay. everyone's coming in with the classical changes that we would see on a chest x-ray. So there's fluffiness in both sides of the lungs showing that the lungs are inflamed. What we don't have much of a feel of at the moment is how quickly people go from just needing some oxygen to becoming very, very sick and needing a breathing machine. We're getting a feel for it because we're starting to see it come through and the good news is there's usually a good few hours where we can assess people and see which way the wind's blowing. Mm. Well, we've got a little <laughs> cat fight occurring in the background there. Hey, Blue. Blue. This is how they welcome you home. Yeah, this is, you know, it's great. Come home. Really. <laughs> and how's the team finding things? Do you even know? Oh, great. You know what? Actually, today has been phenomenal. Yesterday I had the first day off in a, in, a, in a while, and I was actually a bit anxious when I was going around the supermarket and seeing the silly buying and stuff that was going on, and it just all felt a bit surreal. Whereas today, it, we, I was back in my zone and I was able to see how much preparation we've done. And it is just incredible mm. what can be achieved in a week. We normally run sort of two parts of an ICU. We've got four ready to go, waiting for patients to come in, That's fully brilliant. equipped everything. We've trained up 110 nurses this week on how to wear the protective equipment, how to do basic care of an ICU patient and how to use a ventilator. It's been absolutely phenomenal. I think the government response to this has been modelled very, very carefully on existing data mm. and it's proving to be spot on in terms of the time scale. So guys, please stay at home if you're unwell. It's really important, even if it doesn't matter to you, it matters to the elderly person next door. Now is the time for us to try and slow this down a bit, because if we don't, then we will reach a hospital, a point when the hospitals are full, and that, that's when it starts to get worrying. So we may be expecting a bit of a change there. Also, I had this text message from my local GP surgery. It says, due to the coronavirus, we are only able to refer patients to hospital if they have life or limb threatening conditions. Do not contact the surgery with the expectation of an onward referral to hospital. Sounds like there's been some kind of communication with the hospital to the local GP departments 
to reinforce this idea. So any non-urgent stuff we, we don't want to see at the moment. People have different ways of coping with night shifts. I generally get on pretty well with just powering through. I'm definitely a nighttime person. I'm feeling the love, particularly because the day I went to the shops, the same shop I went before, where there was lots of empty aisles. Okay, there were some aisles with still some stuff, but today, so much improved. So loads of the areas that saw blank shelves before have been replenished and could pretty much get whatever I want. Managed to grab the uh, sacred toilet roll. That seems to be a thing that a lot of people have been panicked by. And I'm feeling the love too because the supermarket I went to opened especially for NHS workers and elderly people slightly earlier. Now I didn't go for that earlier bit but I was still able to get what I want. So in my experience that side of it is definitely improving. I did see a couple which must have been in their 70s or at a till and they were challenged by the lady working there saying shouldn't you guys be at home? And they were completely dismissive of her, just saying, well, we'll we feel fine and no one told us we have to stay in. That kind of attitude is not helping everyone. What if everyone did that? That has a direct impact on the ICU beds we're gonna see and the ICU beds that we're seeing being filled up and down the country. And okay, you may not, it may not be affecting your local hospital yet, but there's a lag time to these things. So I'm gonna take it easy for the rest of the day. You gotta take time to charge your batteries, as so many of you guys have said to me, and I'm feeling good. And I'll give you some updates throughout the day. Okay, here we are, ready to kick off the night shift. It, it's been such a lovely day, but it's so chilly right now. Okay, so I'm gonna bear in mind the things that Dr. Jenkins said to look out for. So the classical history, and also he said to be weary about how long things have going on, been going on for. So if you've got the illness for sort of five, six, seven, eight days, more likely to get those nasty complications we talked about. Anyway, let's crack on with the shift, get into some scrubs and let's do this. Who's brought this? What? All the food. Yeah, there was a lot more of it. Oh, there's loads. <laughs> there was pieces of it. Who's given it to us, Seth? Well, Costa. Oh. Marks and Spencer sent all their flowers up. Definitely. Cheers, Costa. And the time is almost three o'clock, and what a change from last week, where a few of my colleagues were seeing the COVID-19 patients. Now, pretty much half of the patients I've seen are very high suspicion and when you first see the changes on the x-ray it well it hits home that we are we are we are in this now i think i had some anxiety if i'd be able to recognize it as opposed to other conditions and maybe there's an element of what we call early diagnostic closure like we have an idea of what's in our mind and then we force what we see to fit that but what else could it be with those x-ray changes and the bloods we talked about? I do have a concern as well with the personal protective equipment. Currently we've seen these high-risk patients in just surgical masks, which aren't designed to stop things coming through the side. And The policy isn't to see these patients with the, the proper fitting mask, the one that I had uh, fit tested last week. That is a concern for me. Our hospital is providing masks at two the guideline, but I think the guideline needs to change personally. You know, I don't think we should be seeing high-risk patients without those FFP3 masks. I think many of my colleagues agree. Anyway, I'm feeling good. I know it might sound like quite a dour note, this one, but it's because it's the middle of the night as much as anything. I knew this would happen. It's very much like those tweets I heard from Dr. Maschini about when you first see it, the first time you diagnose it, it, it feels really significant, but I'm sure in the next coming weeks and months, it's gonna be a routine thing to see these patients. So I'm gonna have some food, crack on with it. I'll chat to you guys at the end. But this midnight snack is brought to you by Sushi, Pepsi Max, and Jelly Babies. I, I wouldn't necessarily, that's not a kind of doctor recommendation. Oh, and a, and a banana too, you, you can eat them, they're all good. Okay, night shift over. And it was definitely a step change. It sort of felt like 
I'd equate it to like a bad horror movie where you hear mumblings of a monster, you kind of see tracks and you hear sort of strange sounds but then eventually you come face to face with it and that's really what we came face to face with today. The staff motivation today has been amazing, another great team to have on. We saw at the beginning of the shift the generosity of some of the companies supporting the NHS, so the public supporting us, all these other companies and some of the chat going around were some of the negative things. It's the first time I've heard about this and two things I've heard come out. The first one is that nursing staff being kind of spat out in their uniform in the street, which is absolutely horrific. And also people getting held at knife point to get their ID cards because they could get you into shops and things. Now, I don't know if any of this stuff is true or not but that's what staff were talking about and don't want to be sold that propagates bad information but that's that type of thing is heading around so you know either way if it is true that needs to stop and if it isn't true whoever's starting those rumors that needs to stop too because that really affects the morale of people around you know we don't want to be talking about that stuff we want to be getting on with the job and <laughs> we don't really want to be talking about how much we're praised either but we just want to you know, get on with the job. Everyone is so proud of the NHS, particularly now. We should have pride in wearing our uniform, but obviously we shouldn't be wearing it for uh, infection control reasons anyway. But any way that identifies you as an NHS thing, you know, you should wear that as a medal of honor. I'm gonna end today's vlog there, go home and get some sleep. So just comparing tonight from where we were last week. So there were three doctors managing the majors department last night, including myself. So we had to see everyone, patients with COVID and patients without. And that's probably, that may be in part where I saw a lot more patients as well. But either way, it's felt like things are picking up and yeah, we'll see what happens next.